Hi, I'm Joe with Advanced Innovations here in Austin, Texas. I'm shooting this video as a courtesy to my fellow divers that are in the market for a camera tray. I've dove with a, several different types and I've come up with a list of things, characteristics that I feel are important and it might be something for you to think about. I'm not trying to sway your decision for which product to buy and I won't talk negative about any other product, but I'll just share with you my observations. Top of my bucket list when it comes to a camera tray is I want to be able to sit it down and not have it fall over. So the thin camera trays, if you're not going to lay it down, fine, uh, economical, but if you go to sit it down, the weight of the light, the weight of the camera, everything, chances are it's going to go forward, backward, and it will not sit up. I don't want any parts to come off of my camera tray either. If I connect my camera with a threaded knob, which most of them do, when you unthread the camera, you don't want that knob to come off the tray. When you look at something in a catalog, you can't tell whether or not it comes off, and chances are they won't tell you, but you don't want that knob to disconnect. So if you're buying online, ask if the knob comes off. It's just something to lose. And naturally, when you're sitting on a dive boat and you drop it or it gets lost in your luggage, uh, you're not going to be shooting video on that $5,000 trip that you just took. The bottom of the unit should be the bottom of the unit. You don't want knobs down there. You don't want buttons. You don't want anything on the bottom of the unit except a place to sit it down. Because after a year or two, you're going to look at the bottom, it's going to be all scuffed up, and you're going to say, this has really seen some abuse. You don't want any functional anything on the bottom except the bottom. You want quick assembly of your unit. You don't want to have to bring Allen wrenches, O-rings, tools, loop spanner wrenches, or any other nifty that the manufacturer is going to offer you. You know what? You can keep that. I want my unit to come out of the box, be ready to use straight out of the box, and I don't want to have to bring or pack or transport any tools to put that unit together. If you're going to buy an aluminum one, make sure it's anodized. Anodized is a chemical process that impregnates the surface of the metal as well as builds up on a microscopic level, but it protects it against saltwater corrosion. Naturally, you should still rinse your gear out in the freshwater tank at the dive shop, but make sure whatever aluminum unit you buy for weight is anodized. Uh, don't want my camera to be the lowest part of the tray. If the camera is a single rail or a flat rail and the camera sits directly on the tray itself and you sit it in the sand for a swim by, everybody waves to mom. Okay, now you've got sand in close proximity to the camera and I've just never been okay with that. Sometimes you get sand in the seals on some of the higher end housings and a year from now it's gonna leak. So watch out for that. I like a two-handed unit versus a one-handed unit because it's easier to get a horizontal reference on the video that you shoot. So if you have a single-handed unit, and they're great, they have their place, and don't, don't get me wrong if that's what you're looking for, there's nothing wrong with them, just beware that it's hard to register your horizontal reference when you're holding one hand because the slightest little twitch here translates to quite a jump out here. I like a two-handed unit, you get a much better reference for horizontal. If you are shooting with any camera tray underwater. Move nice and slow between your subject matter. It's much more dramatic when you watch the video back. When you look around with your head, you just pop into different subject matter with your eyes and it's no big deal. But if you were to move your camera that fast, when you get your video back and you put it on your monitor on your computer, make sure you have a garbage can close by because you're not going to be happy with what you see. Nice and slow between the subject matter nice and slow. You're going to be glad you did. Metal-to-metal uh, -metal contact on any tray is usually not a good thing because when you have metal-to-metal -metal grinding like for screws, nuts, uh, camera attachment points, the metal of a metal knob against the anodized surface of an aluminum tray, the metal knob is going to win. It is going to start to wear the anodize off. And when you have virgin aluminum, you're going to start getting corrosion at that point. Just something to think about. If there's a knob on it, make sure it has a washer on it or some other friction absorbing device that you're not going to damage the anodize. The threads on any unit, uh, I don't particularly care for threads in a sandy, silty environment because threads and any type of debris contamination in those threads usually causes the thread to fail. And that's not a good thing if you have an expensive camera on an expensive tray and all of a sudden threads are starting to fail because you've got sand or silt or the suspended debris in the water is uh, now in with the threads. 
So by all means, make sure you flush your gear out really well, swish it out, take it apart slow. If it feels like it wants to hang up, maybe sometimes unloosening it is not the way to go. Maybe tighten it up just a little bit and something will fall out, rinse it. Be careful, take care of your stuff, wash it thoroughly. Uh, the lights that you choose, a lot of different types of lights out there. There's glow stick kind of lights, there's handheld flashlight kind of lights, there's Velcro glove 2000 lumen monster lights. Great light, they're so bright. Pistol grip lights, I prefer a pistol grip light because it is truly a one hand light. You're going to have certain dive shops that'll say, this light is great, it's 1600 lumens or 2000 lumens and it comes with a glove and it's got all these controls and sliders on the back but see what I'm doing here? Here's your light, here's your hand you need another hand to control that light so it's still a two-handed light I like one hand pistol grip trigger boom on not on simple this is a Princeton Tech Sector 5 light 550 lumens I don't think if you're gonna dive a cave a cenote a shipwreck of uh, I personally from what I've had in the course of my diving experience I wouldn't take anything less than a 500 lumen light with me only because light is absorbed so rapidly underwater that a 300 lumen light in the showroom, although it looks good and you're going to be able to walk around the backyard looking for skunks at night with it, when you hit the water, it's gone. This is a Sector 7 Princeton Tech light. This is a 700 lumen light. But the difference between these two, aside from the obvious physical size, this takes eight C cell batteries, this takes four. Now these are very similar to another manufacturer. UK quality product C4 light has four batteries as I recall and the light cannon series has eight depending on how you're getting to your dive site transporting 16 C cell batteries to me isn't all that appealing and for the difference in illumination I'll take the 550 over the 700 any day of the week although they throw great light and don't get me wrong when you have a setup that has capability of two lights 1400 lumens is like daytime hello snappy coil make sure you put some type of safety lanyard on your camera tray so that if it slips out of your hands for God knows any reason it doesn't go away this system right here has a lanyard on it that allows it to hang from your BCD from a D ring on your on your vest and when you drop in the ocean fall backwards off the boat whatever it stays right there when it's time to film you unsnap it, you got about 40 inches, 48 inches worth of extension on this coil. Fantastic. Put a coil on. You're going to be glad you spent the $20 or whatever. Come in several different styles. Get the one with the stainless steel end. I just trust it more than the plastic end. And the other beautiful thing about this, I'm going to put this together for you real quick. That was ever quick. I'm going to put the camera on. I know it's not a dive camera, but many other dive cameras out there have the quarter 20 thread in the bottom. A lot of them do. Okay, there you go. Fully assembled unit, no tools. When this hangs on the BCD, it hangs pointing straight down, which is really nice because when you drop in, you can trap it against your waist, hold your mask, fall in the ocean. Wonderful. You're good to go. The other good thing, good tip for you with the coil type lanyard, when you're gearing up on the dive boat, don't leave it on the seat next to you because it's going to get bounced around. The person next to you is reaching for their gear and they're swinging their tank and you got a problem. Hang it from the ceiling. It works so well. Find one of the coils, the little strings that they hold the bimini top on the boat with. Hang it from that. Clip it right there. So now it's hanging over your head. You're all geared up. You reach up. The last thing you do is unsnap it. Snap it on off you go. Works really well. All right. GoPro. Let's say you're a GoPro diver. I'm a GoPro diver. There are several benefits to diving with a GoPro camera on a camera tray like this. The standard GoPro base clip, the little two finger tabby thing, if you dive with a GoPro and your system has a GoPro clip receiver, Go on Amazon and for nine bucks, buy a hundred of these things, keep them in your dive bag. You don't want to have your dive ruined because you broke a 60 cent clip. 
Trust me, it has happened. GoPro also makes a thing called a tripod adapter. This is a tripod adapter. Got a screw in the bottom just like the camera and it allows you to put your GoPro where a standard dive camera will go. And there's a benefit here. Let me show you what that benefit is. So not only do you get GoPro quality video, which is what I'm shooting this with, by the way. That's a Hero 3 filming this. The GoPro, since it has this screw across the bottom, gives you the ability to roll the camera forward like that. The dive housings that just have the screw in the bottom will cinch down tight to the tray, and they'll stay that way. So if you have a little eel or worm or something hanging on the bottom, and when you get close to them, you know, you see that little little sandy and they're gone bend your camera down dial in on them light them up and swim away two minutes later when he sticks his little head out to see if everything's okay gotcha so that's a fringe benefit and I like that I like that it moves that way I'm gonna show you a quickie video of what 1100 lumens looks like when shined on a dark wall in this building that wall right there take a look all right, now there's no light. Here comes the 1100. That's one 550. That's a pair of 550s right there. That hot spot's about eight feet across. The halo is still about 35 feet. Um, I would say this is going to have some real penetration power. If you get down around 100 feet and you're going inside of a ship, this is going to get the job done. If you have one of these on the dive boat, you're going to be the most popular person on the boat. Now, that's impressive, is it not? This is a floodlight this is not a spotlight a floodlight comes out and goes boom a spotlight will come out and go a little bit straighter the Princeton Tech light offers a much larger hot spot than some of the competitive lights which is good if you're shooting a video you don't want a dinner plate size hot spot in your video and everything else is just lit and this is really lit this is a little bit better for my application of course it's up to you what you purchased but the the halo of light that these guys throw comes out of the reflector since it's a very large reflector comes out and just goes now we swam in the chicken ha cenote in puerto aventuras mexico in december last year 2015 and the lead diver had a 2000 lumen wrist mount take a look i'm going to put that video in right now I'll show you tell you I was the guy holding that rack system for that dive I was the diver with my hands on this system in that cenote and I was glad that I had a system that threw so much light the scenery in those cenotes in the Yucatan some of the most magnificent scenery you're gonna see anywhere in the world 50,000 year old mineral formations that are just spectacular light them up enjoy it take the right camera you will not be sorry if you're watching this video on YouTube thank you for watching if you have any questions comments stick it in the comment line below and I will monitor and I will respond to you I promise let me introduce this product right here since I got your attention this is called the rack this is manufactured right here in Austin Texas It is a 26 ounce aircraft aluminum camera tray with many awesome features. It has a carabiner mount hole in the center. Do not connect a carabiner even to a frame that you buy, even to a frame that you make with a metal carabiner because as it's rattling around underwater, you're going to hear that tick in your video and you're not going to know what it is until you think back and say, well, I, yeah, I clipped the safety on it and it was rattling around. So if you connect 
a snappy coil or any type of safety, do it with cloth. This particular one has a canvas cloth band that goes around the center beam right here and it doesn't make any noise. So that helps a lot. Uh, the handhold, scalloped so it doesn't slip. The unit that mounts the camera is up. The camera is not the lowest thing in the sand. This is the only functional thread on it. This is compatible with Sector 7 lights, Mini Wave, Shock Wave, Sector 5 lights. Now these are floodlights, these are not strobe lights. So know your gear if you're going to be shooting magazine quality stills. You're going to want a strobe, you're going to want a strobe that you can aim. So make sure you buy the right gear. If you want to visit our website, there's the address right there. I'll make sure it stays up there for the next little bit while I'm talking anyway. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope I gave you something to think about. Some of my experiences I hope will uh, benefit you. Dive safe. See you on the bottom.